Sometimes we actually want to calculate a limit when x is going to plus or minus infinity. The problem is many times this leads to an undetermination of it could be plus or minus infinity over infinity, which is undefined. So we need to find a way to find these limits. As an example that you have in 3.7.3 is an example of how dividing by the highest power actually works. So let's have a look at this example. Now the problem with this is if you go for method number one and you sub in, you end up with plus infinity over plus infinity to the power of 8 plus something infinity to the power of 4 minus infinity. So this is not really something that we can operate with very easily. For some of you, you may have enough mathematical intuition to realize that as x goes to plus infinity, both things go to infinity, but actually this term is going to go faster. It actually means that this entire thing will be going to zero. Now it is not enough to just say that this goes to zero, even though it is true. On an exam or worksheet, if you do this, you may get one mark, but that's one mark out of something like 10. So there's only a tiny percentage of the full marks. What you need to do is to show this in a mathematically rigorous way. And you do that with technique number three, which is divide by highest power. So in this case, the highest power is actually x to the power of 8. So let's try to do this. And to make your life much easier, you can also have a look at what the numerator and denominator are doing independently. Remember that from the properties of the limits, if the limit of something on the numerator exists and something on the denominator exists, and in this case it is not zero, you could actually, the limit of the quotient is just the quotient of the limits. So let's have a look at these individually. So this, if you divide by x to the power of 8, becomes 1 over x to the power of 4 plus pi x to the power of 8. And when x goes to plus infinity, then this goes to... 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity, that's 0 plus 0, that's 0. So when x tends to infinity, the numerator, once we've divided by the highest power, which is x to the power of 8, this goes to 0. And so we can say this is a numerator. The denominator, we're looking at 5, because we've divided by the highest power, plus 45 over x to the power of 4 minus 2 over x to the power of 7. Now, when x goes to plus infinity, this denominator once has been divided by x to the power of 8. And of course, this works because you're dividing x to the power of 8 on top and bottom. So the effect, the net effect cancels out. This will actually go to 0, to 0, and 5. Right. So it means that because of the properties of limits, the limit of this entire expression is the same as the quotient of the individual limits, which means that the limit is 0 over 5, which is 0. So your mathematical intuition for this limit might have been correct all along, but the rigorous way of showing it is to actually split up the limit in this case, dividing by the highest power, showing that if you do that, the top actually goes to zero, where the bottom goes to five, and therefore the combined limit goes to zero.
there's other examples both here and on on worksheets where you'll be able to apply this but it's really important that you don't just say this is zero because you can see it or you've plugged it into a calculator the best way of showing it is by dividing by the highest power let's try something else let's say that we want to investigate this this magical limit that i'm going to make appear here we want to calculate the limit when x goes to 4 of square root of x minus 2 x minus 4. if you go to the easiest thing first thing on the list which is subbing in you realize that you get square root of 4 minus 2 and then 4 minus 4 and you end up with a problem because you get 0 over 0 which is undefined we have covered a case where if we find 0 over 0 we would try number 2 which was factorize the problem here is that you can't really factorize this not in any obvious way you have a square root not x to the power of something one thing you can try and that is helpful in these cases is to multiply and divide by the conjugate so what the conjugate means is if you have an expression which is a plus b multiplying dividing by the conjugate means multiplying by a minus b and a minus b obviously we're not doing anything that's forbidden because these terms cancel out so we're not really doing anything to the expression but it can be very helpful and this turns out to be method number four which you find on the lecture notes which is multiply and divide by a conjugate so how will this work so what we're going to do is understand that the conjugate of square root of x minus 2 is square root of x plus 2 and we're going to multiply it so this means that this is equal to the limit when x goes to 4 square root of x minus 2 square root of x plus 2 divided by x minus 4 square root of x plus 2 so far so good right an important thing that you should be careful about is if you're trying this method you typically will be wanting to cut one of these terms i mean typically this term because this one is the one you're introducing so you don't want to actually be multiplying this and simplifying so keep them in these factors and what you want to do is to try to re-express the top to make it in anywhere near something that you can cancel out because you're multiplying by the conjugate the cross terms will disappear and you literally just end up with a the power of 2 of one of the terms minus the other term to the power of 2 in this case it becomes really helpful because you will recover this term because you get this and because the denominator never really gets to 0 even if you sub in here because this is the limit you can actually cancel it out and this becomes much simpler because it's simply the limit when x goes to 4 of 1 over square root of x plus 2 and in this case we can indeed sub n which means it's 1 over square root of 4 which is 2 plus 2 and the final answer is 1 over 4 so the limit of this expression is 1 over 4 that's correct and it exists you will have to practice and do quite a lot of limits before you could directly understand that you could multiply and divide by a conjugate but typically signs to look out for are getting something that's undefined as 0 over 0 and whenever you cannot factorize multiplying and dividing by a conjugate will, will also help you a lot
So practice on other examples and try to see if you can get the, the method. And don't forget that you shouldn't be multiplying these terms, otherwise you're going to make your life miserable. So sometimes what happens is you get 0 over 0, you multiply and divide by the conjugate, but then you actually multiply these terms and you end up with something that you cannot cancel out, which defeats the purpose of the method. So remember to keep these and only operate on top until you try to find something that you can cut and then solve the limit. Sometimes though, you go through the list of up to now, one through four, and you still cannot determine the limit. Typically this means you need to do something a little bit more fancy, or you need to try to break the limit into parts. This means you really need to know the properties of limits, the sum, subtraction, product, and quotient properties, and try to operate them to break the limit into parts that you can solve. So this is method number five, which is re-express. And I would say that this is the most general method because factorizing, multiplying, or dividing by conjugates technically are also about re-expressing the limit into something that you can then solve, but this is much, much more general. Let's try to solve the following limit here. This limit, which in this case, it's really supposed to be calculated like this. It's the limit of the entire thing. If you were to plug in, you may not be able to find it directly, or at least not in accurate terms. This is still an easy one, but I think it is important to use it as a way to exemplify how you use the properties of limits. Okay? So the first thing you'd probably be looking at is to use the sum property. So it means that the limit of this entire thing will be the limit of this plus the limit of this. And also you will see that we have a fraction. So we can also say that the limit of the fraction is the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. So let's try to do that. Now, once, once we get to this stage, we can also try to, for example, use the multiplication rule or the constant multiplication rule. The fact that you can actually take constants out because they don't depend on x. And here, use the quotient rule. In this case, what you can also do is transform the expression into something that you can calculate the limit for. In this case, this limit clearly goes to zero. So that's a constant times zero, that's zero. And the limit over here, actually, because you can cancel out the x's, and this goes to zero, will be two thirds. So it means that ultimately, the limit is through two thirds. It means you have a very clear example of how you should be able to manipulate the limit using the properties of limits to try to solve it. Obviously it means that for many limits there is not a single way to actually determine its value. You can be very creative. So provided that you're mathematically rigorous and we'll see that for some of the differentiation rules like the product rule or the quotient rule there are some mathematical tricks like adding and subtracting parts of the expression that will do nothing to the equation because they cancel out, but you can reabsorb those terms to then determine the limit. And this is just one first easy example of, of how to do that. And we'll cover many, many more. So I would say that this number five of re-expressing is probably the most important, more advanced thing. And again, you can only get intuition and become a pro at it if you try a lot of these. One important note about re-expressing, and we will demonstrate those limits, but there are fundamental limits like sine x over x when x goes to zero, for example, that actually goes to one. Once we've proven those limits, if you can get part of the expression to be one of those fundamental limits, then you can actually calculate them directly.
So knowing a few fundamental limits will also help you in, in this method, because if you re-express them as something you know how to calculate, then you can just sum, subtract, multiply or divide by those values and get the final answer.